this. Stuff cleared up. All right, guys. Just exploring. This is the, the woods. This is one of the woods that I use. Um, not been used over the winter, so just having a ride round and clearing some of the fallen debris out of the way. Nice little training area this. Some mm -hmm. badgers been digging there or something. Right through the day, just a quick one. I saw some bits what needed moving. This is a bit of a mess down here, so we'll, just, uh, we'll sort this out. face when I'm riding or any of this stuff. So, slightly come a cropper. We'll shove that to one side but pretty rotten is this. Yeah we got really rotten. Things like this will flick up and stick in your spokes or whatever. Not nice if you fall on them. in places this ground very dry at the moment so very sandy in places and all GPX. Just answer a couple of personal questions which I've had uh, sort of passed to me through Messenger for the last sort of couple of days since the last one I did down at the, uh, the track. Just about, you know, the bike 12 months on, etc. Yeah, I've just had a, f a few questions really, just about the bike, and just sort of try and sort of clear those up. Um, just an ignition off while we're doing this. But basically, um, somebody said to me, I watched your video, there's a of cars gone past, I watched your video, one of the earlier videos, I think it's probably 
really on not long after I got it and uh, I changed quite a few things on the bike very subtle things and people were asking me why I'd done that and really it was a simplicity for uniformity in conjunction with the other bikes that I've got so I want to be using the same tools on this bike that I use on my other bike and that be it if I a bit of a twig in there if I take this bike away for the weekend I can take the same toolkit while using other bikes so this particular bike came standard with a lot of uh, Torx type screw head uh, fasteners like what held the, the rad shrouds on the, uh, the frame guards in various places they were like uh, stainless steel Torx head fittings which nothing wrong with them just that I wanted to change them to the same uh, tool uniformity as my other two KTM's so I wanted 6mm heads as opposed to a Torx fitting on the rad shroud so I can get my 6mm T-bar and work on the bike so every time I get one of my bikes back to the workshop or back to my house in the garage stripping it down, cleaning it, whatever the same toolkit every time I'm not having to think about oh right, I'm working the GPX now I need a T45, a T40 or a, a T25 whichever, all I need to know is that I need 6, 8, 10 mil T-bars 13 mil for my suspension rear shock if I need to take it out the 17 up front which is standard on across the board anyway with all the, the bikes and a 32 for my rear axle those tools will pretty much strip this bike down to the bare bones pretty much on oh, a t45 as well t45 for the the subframe bolts so all those tools i can work on my or on this bike and i can work on my other bikes with as well except with the exception of the rear axle no, on the other backs is a 27 as opposed to a 32 so I would have the 27 mil spanner this is a 32 on the rear axle so that's just my preference really and also uh, with the, the Jubilee clips what fasten the radiators standard Jubilee clip uh, socket head size is 7 mil with the KTM's the Gas Gas or Scavanas they're all 6 mil yeah, and that's what I want here. I want it again uniformity with those small parts as well. Uh, so I, I changed all the Jubilee clips to the 6mm head. Now, if you work on a Sherco, like I do sometimes at, at Eurotech, you will know that all those small fasteners are 7mm. And there's various sizes of things on a Sherco, different to. Uh, yeah, your, your main three, yeah, your Husky KTM gas gas, yeah. You've got them, particularly on the the linkage, you've got like 18 mil uh, nuts. So, you know, if I'm working on a shirt, I'm, I'm thinking, right, okay, yeah, and I think I think it's 12 mil on the uh, the pinch bolts on the front axle, 7 mil for the uh, the, the brake line that goes through the mud, the uh, the fork guard on the front. Yeah, they've got 7mm there, Sherco's, they've got 12mm down there. Then, oh yeah, I need suspension right, I need an 18mm socket or an 18mm ring spanner. Um, there's a lot of variations and all their Jubilee clips are 7mm. Uh, you know, with, when you're running a fleet of bikes, just easy to have uniformity and that's why I went with uniformity on the GPX for no other reason than that for personal preference uh, right so that's that's that covers that aspect of it some guards people you know I've had this argument for ages about some guards Plastic sump guards, you know, people say, oh, I like plastic sump guards are better. They slide over uh, trees and, and uh, you know, rocks better, that sort of thing. Which is, yeah, I, I would agree with you on that. But what you find, or what I find, and what I see with 
plastic sump guards is your bikes soon get damaged underneath, the frame rails soon get damaged underneath. Full stop. The amount of battered frame rails I've seen over the last three years working at Eurotech from customers' bikes is just absolutely obscene. Um, I've always ran an alloy sump guard. You start hitting rocks, you start pounding into things, I don't care if it's, if it's a tree trunk, the chances are you're going to get damaged to your frame rails, whether it's a beta shake or gas gas, GPX, I don't give a flying whatever, what bike it is. All these bikes will get damaged one way or another. So I'm having a bit of a rant now over, over what people have said previously about uh, GPX frames being like plasticine. Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of plasticine out there and it's not GPX, if that's, if that's what people are thinking. Um, this bike has had an aluminium sump guard on pretty much from very early on. Um, you may remember that can't go past. You may remember that I, in the early days, I took this bike to Cam Quarry and we ripped the plastic sump guard off and I left it. Didn't know where it were. The guys found it later on, said, do I want it back? I said, no, you can have it as a tea tray. I'm not bothered. I've now got something better on. So I went for the Enduro Engineering sump guard and it's fantastic. And, and it's, and I, you know, I've got to say, it is one that I modified to fit. It wasn't a direct fitment, but it's one of a, Designed for the again the main three Husky KTM Gas Gas uh, motocross versions, with a little bit of modification, it fits really nice, and it's also got the plastic extender as you can see there, and it saves the frame. The, the frame, when I take that off, there's no dents in the frame. Period. Um, so again, it's personal preference what you use, plastic, plastic sump guards or you go for alloy. Personally, it's an alloy every single time. And when I get the GPX 300 TSA, that's going to be the same deal. It's going to have a alloy sump guard on. So it's personal preference. Uh, where else are we? Right. Uh, somebody mentioned about the clutch the other day as well. Um, they sent me a personal message asking, you know, what my thoughts on the hydraulic clutch conversion on the GPX. Right, the, the reason why I went for a hydraulic clutch conversion was I wanted a, 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 a clutch what just self-adjusted. Now, when the engine gets hot, clutches can swell. You do get a little bit of swelling on this clutch, on this bike. Uh, and if you've got a hydraulic clutch, the, uh, the lever will self-adjust. You know, the... the uh, the slave cylinder will adjust to where it needs to be continually throughout the, the heat range. So that was initially why I went down that road of having a hydraulic clutch on. And to make things uh, a little bit easier on the fingers and um, sort of, how can I say, yeah, less maintenance. So that was why I went for it. The reason why I've taken it off is because of the slave cylinders what I had weren't resistant to being pressure washed and that the seal just kept blowing and it was just been becoming a bit of a pain in the ass so I thought you know what let's revert back to cable clutch and it's fine it's fine it's, it, you know for what I'm using the bike for my training my fitness uh, some green laning the you know the, the cable clutch is more than adequate and providing you oil it frequently uh, it's fairly light but again it's down to your maintenance what you do so that's that question so we've covered the the little nuts and bolts why I changed them we've covered the the sump guard and we've covered the the clutch um, well oh yeah somebody asked me about the switch on the handlebars now I've gone to a European switch Again, I did that early on because with the uh, if you are doing some serious off-road work like I've I've done this bike, I kept catching the the stop button, you know, the pushing stop button, what was on the standard uh, uh, switch switch gear. It was always in the most awkward moment, going up a hill climb or whatever, and, it, and I'd just knock it by you know moving my body around, etc cut the bike off and then a bit having to go back down to the bottom hill and start again so having that fitted 
just took that, that away and I've got the a push button stop there which is like it's on spring loaded type and the wiring wiring in was very simple and uh, somebody asked me about the touch and go carburetor Would, how, what do I recommend in terms of uh, the standard carb well I never really got going with standard carb to be honest um, I never I didn't really get that I didn't get the jets I just thought you know what I saw a lot of people having a lot of success with the Xting, having some good fun with it, and, it, and it, particularly on this uh, engine. Uh, the guys in South America were, were doing a lot of work with XTNG, the Tux and Go Carb, and that's why I went down for that. I just put it on, took a bit of setting up, working things out. Now I know how to set one of those up, it's an absolute doddle. And, you know, it's, it's running pretty good. The, uh, you know, the this power on tap all the time you know you push the throttle and it comes in straight away there's no delay or anything Gen 2 carb, <laughs> no, no issues with it at all. Um, yeah, initially, it was like freaking out. What do I, how do I set this carb up? You know, it was like hanging idle, all, all, all sorts of stuff. And what we found was that all you need to do is you've got a hanging idle on your Gen 2 carburetor, you just wind the meter rod up. So it's richer. Now on this bike, if memory serves me right, I think the I'll stand corrected now because I'll show a photograph, but I think the setting was 51.6 for the, the meter rod length. Um, went down half a turn, went down three quarters of a turn, hanging idle, the bike was running like crap pretty much, yeah. So I actually ended up Turning the meter rod a lot richer, I went from 51.6 to 50.2 in length, which is like you know, it's 1.4 millimeters shorter, which is quite a big deal. And in doing that, we got the um, the mixture screw. I don't know if you can see it on here, but there's a mixture screw on the carb. The mixture screw pretty much dialed into where it'd be. And now it's now at two turns out. And I don't have to touch it. It's it's a solid idle. You know, pull the choke when you're cold starting, and it just it runs. Um, I've not done anything to it since I've got here. You know, start the bike up on choke, um, get it running for a, a 30 seconds or so on choke, knock the choke off, and it runs. It just ticks over. So there you go. That's a little bit of a. Uh, question and answer, a sort of reply, and uh, you can see what's going on, see what's going on with the GPX, and you know, it's, it's a solid bike. 
it, it really has been a solid bike for me. And uh, because it's, you know, it was the first bike sold in the UK, it's not going anywhere for quite some time. There you go, guys. Back soon. Stay tuned. Hard and Journal Adventure Media at Eurotech. Uh, I think I'm back at Tong very soon on a private ride, so see you soon, guys. Thank <laughs> you.